All right, what's going on guys? Over the last month, ever since the Elden Ring DLC trailer dropped, and we finally got our first look of what more Elden Ring is going to be, we've undertaken the task here on the channel to explore as many of the mysteries as possible that we still have about the base game in order to get a grasp and understanding of what could possibly show up in the DLC. Now, many of the previous topics that we've discussed have had very extensive lore explained through item descriptions or plot points in the main game, but the topic that we'll be talking about today is quite possibly the biggest unexplained mystery that has absolutely no evidence suggesting what it might mean, which makes it the ideal point of speculation and in my opinion, all the more fun to dig into. Today we'll be attempting to explain the mysterious statue found at the back of Malaketh's arena, who or what it's depicting, and why I think it could be a key indicator of some of the major plot points in the DLC. So as we get into that today, if you want to stay up to date on all things Elden Ring DLC, and enjoy the lore and discussion, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and now let's begin. When the player first arrives in Faramazula, the one thing they'll notice right off the bat is the stark difference of the architecture compared to the rest of the lands between. Not only is it a city floating in the sky, held in suspension by various storms, compared to the other cities and castles found in the lands between, Faramazula's architectural style is entirely different, suggesting that the inhabitants of this place adopt a different culture than the primary societies of the lands between. Now when we actually see who inhabits Faramazula, in the present time of the game. It's a combination of beastmen, exiles, and dragons, but there's clearly a story of history here, one that we currently lack the full picture of. So when the player reaches Malaketh's boss arena in the main temple of Faramazula, these are aspects that need to be considered, as naturally, seeing the statue in the back will raise plenty of questions. So what is this statue? Featured prominently at the back of the arena, we see what appears to be a statue of a girl surrounded by three wolves. The girl is knelt down in prayer, while the wolves are snarling and circling her. We see that her hair is braided, with a little decorative piece on top of a flowering branch, while the robes that are on her appear to be plain and lacking any sort of obvious motif. But the most curious part of this statue is this Elden Ring symbolism that we see directly above it. Here we see an entirely unique depiction of the Elden Ring, unlike anything else in the game. It's much more wild, with tons of offshooting roots and a different pattern altogether down the middle and intersecting at the top. For comparison, here's a side by side with the common Elden Ring depiction that we see all throughout the game. The distinction is quite clear. This new form of the Elden Ring currently presiding over the lands between is all but a fraction of what we see in Faramazula. Now for the Elden Ring being the very thing that governs the state of the world, the shape of the runes that make it up is very important. But why does this statue in particular stand out so much? It seems to be much more than just a statue, as when we look at the ring that's depicted here, it's surging with this sort of power, almost like heat distortion when looking at a hot surface. The statue also has a dedicated page in the game's art book where it's much more detailed and has this bright green glow to it, and that's after it's already the center of the picture in the image of the Malaketh fight. So clearly there's some significant storytelling here, but what is it? Ferrum Azula represents time, primarily history, a place calling back to an age of pre-evolution where beasts and dragons ruled, and a thread that ties all of that together is the Crucible, a concept said to be the place where all life converges and the Erd Tree in its primordial form. The Crucible Feather, Scale, and Knot talismans have a description that reads, A talisman fashioned from an embodiment of aspects of various creatures, said to have grown on the human body long ago, a vestige of the Crucible of Primordial Life. Born partially of devolution, it was considered a signifier of the divine in ancient times, but is now increasingly disdained as an impurity as civilization has advanced. These are all things that comprise the denizens of Faramazula. So if a version of the Elden Ring specific to Faramazula is a primordial depiction of that crucible, and given that we have an example of someone who was once an Elden Lord here in Placidusax, I think the most likely possibility of this Elden Ring shape was his order, this un tamed crucible of life throughout a prehistoric age. But that's just the common theory at the moment. 
The question we now need to be focusing on is who is this girl in the statue? Let's entertain the idea for a minute that this statue is depicting a character we know of in the lore. In reference to the three wolves we can see here, there's an important piece of lore that I think ties into this very well. The description of the Raging Wolf set reads, Armor worn by Vargrim the Raging Wolf, one of the first tarnished to visit the Round Table Hold. According to the old legends, wolves are the shadows of the Empyrean. Vargrim aspired to such a state himself. We see two examples of Empyrean shadows in Elden Ring, one being Blythe, who is in service to Rani, and the other being Malekith himself, in service to Queen Merica, which has led a lot of people to believe that the statue is actually depicting Queen Merica in a younger form, which we'll talk about more in a minute, but I do think it's safe to assume that the wolves in the statue and its placement beneath the depiction of the Elden Ring mean that whoever the figure is must be an Empyrean, which would make sense, considering that an Empyrean would be the candidate it to become a god, and therefore dictate the state of the Elden Ring, providing a full picture and meaning of the statue alongside this depiction of the Elden Ring. Perhaps it's commemorating the first Empyrean, or just the concept in general. But let's consider some other things. The Empyreans that we know of in Elden Ring's lore are Queen Merica, Rani, Mikola, Melania, and the Gloam-Eyed Queen. Now, I think it's pretty safe to say that the statue is probably not depicting Melania, as there's virtually no lore connections between her and anything to do with Malekith or Faramazula at all, and I would say the same for Mikola. However, the statue is depicting what looks to be a child, which Mikola was forever cursed to be, and he's enough of an enigmatic figure in the lore that there could still be plenty of story there that we don't know about. And in addition to that, in order for Mikola's needle to work properly, you do have to take it to Placidus Axe's arena which is a loose connection at best. Now, things get pretty interesting when we take a look at the connections with Rani, because she has ties to Malekith in having stolen a fragment of Destined Death. In addition to that, she's the only person besides Merica that we see actually have a wolf shadow. To make it even weirder, when we meet her for the first time, she gives us a spirit ash that summons three wolves, just like what the statue depicts. And if you venture to Rani's rise, guess what you'll find guarding the entrance? Once again, three wolves. That imagery is certainly no accident. Now, like Mikola, even though we have some connections here, I don't think the statue is of her, given that it likely predates the age in which she was born, assuming that it comes before the union of Radagon and Renala. And also, we don't have a connection between Rani and the Crucible, or a specific state of the Elden Ring that that statue might be depicting. The Gloam-Eyed Queen is another possible alternative, given that she has a very strong connection with Destined Death, being the original wielder of Destined Death, before Malekith defeated her. Now, we don't have a whole lot of lore here, but the statue does show the wolves in a sort of snarling and circling, almost an oppressive stance, which could be symbolic of Malekith's victory and sealing of her true power. But any signs we could draw between her and the Elden Ring would be pure guesswork. There is also a lore description of a god of Placidusax's age that has since disappeared, that I think is a very strong candidate to be that statue, given that we established what the Elden Ring is most likely depicting there. Given that by all the descriptions we have, in order to become a god, you must be an Empyrean, then if that statue is the god of Placidusax, they could have been the very first Empyrean. But the problem is beyond one sentence describing their existence, we don't have any more lore there. So while I do think that the statue would most likely be the god accompanying that depiction of the Elden Ring, there's just simply no more substance to pursue there. Now we get into interesting territory when we consider that the statue might be Queen Merica, and given new context of the DLC, there's a lot of possibilities here. Firstly, let's talk about what we know is going to be a major plot point of the DLC, that being Queen Merica's past and her journey to godhood, and that was confirmed by Miyazaki to be one of the things we'll be uncovering as we explore the Land of Shadow, as he stated that the Land of Shadow is the place she became a god and the Erd Tree was born. So that right there gives us a connection to the Elden Ring, and more importantly the Crucible, as the Crucible is the primordial form of the Erd Tree, it in its first stages of life. Now what does that mean for the statue? Assuming it is of Queen Merica, the statue likely depicts her before her ascension to godhood, during her time as an Empyrean, in the state of the Elden Ring and Order of the World prior to her designs. And given that Malekith is her shadow-bound beast, the statue may serve as a reminder of his duty and his job to protect destined death. But even if that's not the meaning of the statue, 
issue, those are things we're going to learn about in the DLC, so it's worth delving into further. But I am glad that that's a topic that's going to get touched on because there's so many holes in the lore there, and so many mysteries to be further explained. This statue being a prime example of that. So y'all let me know down below, who do you think this is in the statue, and what do you think this Elden Ring means? Do you think we'll get the answer to that in the DLC, or do you think this mystery will remain unsolved forever? Anyways though guys, that is going to do it for the video today, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it and subscribe if you're new around here. Let me know what other topics you want me to cover in preparation for the DLC, and with all that, I will catch you in the next one.